What's up guys, Cherokee Ronnie back at you with another video. I know it's been a while, but I've been slacking off because one, YouTube don't pay very much. Two, I don't get very many views anymore because everybody's turned their back on me because I don't make awesome Jeep content anymore. But today we're gonna to be doing a little sit down because I get emails over and over again. I get comments over and over again. So I'm gonna make one video dedicated to this. And I'm sure you know what it is by the title. I'm pretty sure you clicked on it. What lift kit should I buy for my Jeep Cherokee XJ? So we're gonna be three categories. We're gonna be talking about the lifts that you put together from the junkyard, and we're gonna be talking about a cheap lift, and we're gonna be talking about the expensive lift that I recommend. So first off, we're gonna be talking about Amazon lifts. Should I buy an Amazon lift? I get this all the time, pop, 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 pop. Should I get an eBay lift? Um, what kind of eBay lift? What kind of Amazon, Amazon lift? So here's what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to talk about pucks in the front and an add a leaf in the back from Amazon and eBay because they're basically the same thing. Um, I've actually run three inch rough country springs in the, springs in the front with a puck, a two inch puck in the front, and it did perfectly fine. It did ride a little bit rough, but when, where those kits fell is when the add a leaf gives. Um, there's nothing wrong with pucks. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, adding on top of lift springs or just adding it on the top or on the stock spring. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the add a leaf that comes with it. Um, it, it looks good when you first do it, but how many Cherokees have you seen, uh, you know, on your way to work or on the town, they're sagging in the rear after they've been lifted? It's because they use an add a leaf. Um, I don't recommend using an add a leaf from eBay, Amazon, or Rough Country. Um, because they all sag. But if you're going to go that route using pucks on top, I recommend finding an S10 spring and using the main leaf out of the S10. And that way you have add a leaf that will hold up for the rest of the Jeep's life. Add a leaf, uh, you're looking to somewhere, if you, if you use a main leaf out of an S10, S10, from my experience, I've got anywhere from two and a half inches to three inches just by using the main leaf and then I use the puck up front to make up the difference. Um, it just depends on your Jeep, just depends on the S10 spring, how old it is, how new it is, how rusty it is, you know, it just depends on all that stuff. So I can't say and tell you what your exact height is going to be. Um, number two, uh, we're going to be talking about piecing together a lift. Thousands of stuff online, Thunderbird springs, Ford, or Ford F-150 springs. I do not recommend that because it will jar your teeth out of your head. But there's so many things that you can get from the junkyard. But here's what I always get. I always search my local Craigslist uh, or you know to find used lists. But if I can't find it, what I do is I get on Amazon. I ordered Rubicon Express four and a half inch springs. And then I took the whole pack of an S10 even the main leaf, I just cut the eyes off, left the main leaf on my Jeep, put that up on there, put a new center pin in, and that baby sets high. Um, so it just depends what you wanna do. That's the route I would take. I did have to get new lower control arms. I did get them from Rusty's, but you'll be fine to run your Jeep, you know, to work or back and forth, wherever you gotta do with the stock ones until you can get aftermarket ones. So that's totally fine. That's another question, can I run stock? Lower control arms, yeah, but if you're gonna go off road, you need to get aftermarket lower control arms. I didn't even get a track bar, I just drilled the hole, moved it over, and that and that worked fine off road for for a year. So uh, don't stress, piecing a lift together can result into success because mine was awesome. Everybody loved it, they wanted to know how I did it so cheaply. Uh, I got used rough country shocks, which they didn't last very long, they lasted like 15 minutes on the trail. So that leads us to our next, you know, our next conversation. Everybody says, should I buy a rough country lift? Here, here, here's the answer. If you're going to be grocery shopping, uh, if you're going to go back and forth to work, if your wife's driving the Jeep, if you, if you do mild wheeling on the weekends, like every other weekend, go for rough country. Rough country is a bad just, it's, it's, it's not built for the off-road. I'm sorry, it's not built for the off-road. Um, 
Now, I love rough country stuff when it comes to the trucks because it's different. But when it comes to the Jeep stuff, it's just not built for the off-road. Their, their shocks blow out. The bushings go out on their shocks. The, bushing go, you know, the bushings go out on their lower control arms all the time. It's just really cheap stuff. And people say, all oh, this stuff's built in, America, built in America. It's the best stuff in the world. But it's not really. I don't, I'm not a big fan of rough country. I'm not knocking the company. I'm not trying to steer you away from having a relationship with rough country. But I've not had very good luck with rough country. Um, so they're, they're, they're spring sag in the back, they're spring sag in the front, just not very good quality for what you buy. You, you know, you're, you're, you, you are working, you're a working man like I am and you're wanting to spend your money on something budget, but you want it to last and that's not rough country. Um, and you may ask, you know, what lift should I get then that's budget, you know, budget friendly zone, zone all day. I, I've went from Rusty's off road to zone. I'm telling you right now, buy a zone lift. Right, hands down, get a zone lift, call it quits, and go on. So that leads us to, if I had all the money in the world, what lift kit would you buy? BDS. Hands down, I would buy BDS because I've seen BDS take so much abuse and they have a great warranty, they, they have great uh, customer service and all this stuff. Do not buy a add a leaf kit from Amazon and eBay. They won't last very long. Uh, and then your 31 that you put in there, they're going to they're going to rub in the rear, you know, before next week. Um, number two, you know, get 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 an S10 leaf pack, add it to the back, and get pucks for the front, or get you know Amazon Springs like I did. And uh, if you're going to buy a cheap lift, get Zone. If you're going to buy expensive lift, I recommend BDS. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, you know, little sit down. We's talking, you know, it's a good video, you know. Maybe it'll steer some direction on all the emails and comments that I get on all the other videos. So this will have a title so you can just go click and watch. But I'm Cherokee Ronnie and stay dirty my friends.